In this issue of Real Magic, the amazing Jonathan, Charlie Fry, and Bill Malone wreak havoc on the Magic Live dealer room. Charlie Fry, I'm here. I'm playing with Marvin's Magic because I got my own eccentric magic set. And uh, it teaches a lot of difficult stunts and some easy ones. One of my favorite is dice stacking. And dice stacking is a very tricky skill. The hard part is to end up so Charlie, they're just look out. perfect. Charlie, just perfect. Charlie, right. look out. I can't oh, help. Son of a bitch. Oh, Sorry, God. this is new. That's right. This is new. I just got this like for 100 bucks. I haven't and figured it out yet. When you stack them, it's the ending that is the hardest part is to make sure that they, they, they have a real neat stack. You okay? No, no, I'm, I'm really not. I, right. I, I think I broke oh, my... Shit. Here I, we go. I think I broke something. Oh, God. Oh, God, Jonathan. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll get the hang of this. <laughs> Look out. So this is another thing that's on the set is this. Jeez, sorry, sorry. Come on, get on. Oh, sorry. We can fly. Can't you fit on there? Oh, yeah, that might work. Yeah. Get on. Oh, gosh. All right, ready. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. This is like an accident waiting to happen. All right. Ready? Ready. Yeah. All right, go. Is it working? Whee! Yeah, we're flying, baby. Look at hey, this. Hey, check it out. <laughs> Get out. Whoa. Get out. <laughs> hey, beep, beep. Come on, can't you hear that? For God's sake. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, this is you have a you have a card. The card is gone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you do this, and the card is back. All right? And the card is gone. The card is back. <laughs> Real mature, Jonathan. Real mature. Yeah. yeah. Security. No problem here. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Thanks. <sighs> hey. Somebody's going to get Oh, jeez. There's a wet an, spot. There's that a, was an oh. accident, Charlie. Oh, God. I didn't see you there. I hope there's an extra one of those around somewhere. Boy, I'm so glad I found some crutches around here. Charlie! What? <laughs> Jonathan, I need a lift. I'll stop him. <laughs> jeez. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Someone needs to go pick him up, Johnny. <laughs> I knocked him over the booth. <laughs> Jeez. <sighs> also in issue 51, Christian uses the ESP deck premise to demonstrate a couple's connection. Now it's important, and so I had to pick these two because they are dating, they have this great relationship. There's what I like to call synergy, which is energy plus. Yeah. All right, whatever. So, um, now that we've done that, I like to explain where this comes from. So sometimes when I'm at home trying to think of really cool ideas to perform, um, usually I'm just sitting in a pile of Cheeto dust watching game shows. Yeah, and that's where this came from. This is where this whole idea, that's roots, right? And so you know what I like about game shows? Do you know? It's what you can win, like a swimming pool. Swimming pool, huh? Is that awesome? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Or a washer and dryer. And then we have a boat. You know, pontoon or speedboat, what would you go with? I like tugboat. <laughs> I like you. So I'm gonna deal these like this. Perfect, you each get five. Now, I like to play it this way. And that is, you will actually get to look at what you pick, you'll pick one and put it aside. You will not get to see what you're picking from. You'll just shuffle them and you'll pick one, but then you'll look at it. Okay. You great. will look at it and remember it. Yeah. So go ahead and do that. Fantastic. Tell me when you've done that. And then place the ones that you picked here, right in front. Great. And because this is all about synergy, we what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap and then put them in your packets and, and shuffle them up again. Now my job is to look at you guys and decide what kind of uh, what kind of gift would you pick, right? So now yours I don't care about because you actually have his gift now, which he didn't get to pick, but she got to pick. So I'm gonna look at yours okay. and see if I can find the one that I think 
she would pick. Um, I, well, you know, it's a, it's a hard one. Okay. Here's what I think. I think you would pick this one. And you picked the? $10,000. Boom. $10,000. That's how good I am. David Regal shares some crazy gimmicks. Tyler Erickson discusses tension and relaxation. And Doc Eason talks with Garrett Thomas about strategies for varying your patter for different performing environments. I'm working on a trick that Garrett has given me a whole lot of insight on, and it's the uh, uh, mental photography deck, or the nudist deck. Um, I showed it to my pal George Parker, who is one of the more brilliant thinkers in magic. Do you know George? I haven't met him yet. Oh man, oh man, you guys would get along famously. But I showed him that mental photography deck and the pattern line that I used about a guy that came in and showed me a trick and fooled me. And, um, and I said, I, I'm open for suggestions, what do you got? And he said that every trick he does, he has three different presentations for it. A serious one, a comedy one, and one that has some pseudo-scientific explanation or background to it. You've got some thoughts on, uh, on, on patter and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, You've got thoughts on everything. I, I have a similar rule. Um, kind of achieves the same thing. But if I, if I can design the trick so that I could perform it silently, then whatever way I want to take it, uh, I can make it funny, I can make it serious, I can make it whatever, whatever the crowd wants, right. I can give it to them. As always, we've got plenty of tricks to teach you. In this issue, there's a trick from Chris Korn and three from Tom Frank. So once again, don't watch closely, don't do it. Rather listen closely to the sound. I don't know if you guys can hear this in the back. To the sound, or, or rather the lack of sound of three silver dollars vanishing into thin air. Now a lot of people stop me and they say, I know what you did. The coins didn't really disappear. They're just invisible. Floating through the air in a dematerialized state. That's exactly what's going on here. Because if I reach up and grab that first coin, place it back in the scarf, that's coin number one. Coin number two. And coin number three, behind the back the hard way, three silver dollars, a silk scarf, and you guys. <laughs>